I have you, Traveler's Born. You fought well, but let this be a lesson. I can offer you something greater than light. I can keep you safe. Welcome back, Guardians. Thank you for your previous support on the last videos. Like I said, I haven't given up on Destiny lore, but rather wanted to provide entertaining content whilst Destiny 2 corrects its future. Regardless, let's jump into the next Destiny lore episode about Kallus. With the release of the Raid Lair, Eater of Worlds, the new weapons and armor helps to establish whether we will actually ever meet Kallus, the real Kallus not just his robot form. Today I will discuss why from a lore perspective it is likely that we will meet Kallus and hopefully how Bungie will deliver this. The artwork seen at the beginning of this video was provided by Gamma Trap and paid for with your generous donations on Patreon. A link to Patreon is below if you are interested. This is Marlin Games and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. At the beginning of October 2017, the prestige raid gear for the Leviathan raid was found in the Destiny database. This originally included the Sacris gear set for the Warlock, the Feltrock gear set for the Hunters, and the Nor gear set for the Titans. These items were mysteriously erased and replaced by an entirely different prestige gear set. At that time, we did not know why the gear was removed, however, it became clear in December 2017 that the gear set had been moved to the Raid Lair Eater of Worlds loot pool. In addition, Eater of Worlds introduced two new weapons, the Grenade Launcher I Am Alive and the Shotgun Zenith of Your Kind. With changing the loot pool around, the overarching narrative is clearer. Everything is leading to a real encounter with Kallus. Let me explain. When the Leviathan Raid was first released, the armor introduced the Shadows of Kallus. The Warlock set told the story of the Fulminator, the Titan set told the story of Rull, and the Hunter set told the story of Jarrus. The Shadows of Kallus were all different species and consisted of the greatest warriors or leaders from their respective species. For example, the Fulminator was sentient arc energy that agreed to join Kallus so that Kallus would spare her species, the Arcborn. Jarrus from the Sindhu was a fighter pilot that joined Kallus after Kallus destroyed Jarrus's entire battalion. The helm of the Ace Defiant reads, Jarrus blinked slowly. What about the other pilots? His battalion, did they escape? You. The last star pilot of the Sindhu will be my ace defiant. It was not a choice. Finally, Rull was from a warrior race known as Eclipse and had boarded the Leviathan. Rull was the only warrior to survive. The gauntlets of Rull read. The greatest warriors of the Eclipse lay dead. They formed a bloody trail through the Leviathan. Only Rull had lived to see the throne room. Kallus calmly sipped his wine and considered Rull from the height of his golden seat. Are you hungry? Rull stared dumbfounded, bleeding and exhausted. He didn't know what to make of a creature that would casually offer sustenance and slaughter in equal measure. I offer you a warrior's paradise, Rull of the Clips. Join me and be counted among the lucky few that might see the end of this world. What could Rull do but accept? So to summarize, the Leviathan normal raid gear introduces the concept of the Shadows of Kallus, different species that Kallus recruited into his army by either obliterating their entire forces and seeing what remains, or by threatening to destroy their entire species. The Shadows of Kallus go on to assassinate Kallus' enemies, specifically the ones who assisted Gaul in the military takeover. Now we can continue the story with the Prestige Raid Gear set. Primarily, the Prestige Raid Gear documents Kallus' internal thoughts and how he has come to the conclusion that he would forgive Gaul for his betrayal. In the robes of the Emperor's Minister, Kallus offers Gaul the title of Primus of the Red Legion. The item reads, I think it is only fair to warn you. 
I mean to reincorporate the Red Legion. I'm their rightful emperor, and I shall offer them forgiveness. All they must do is repent and submit to their re-education. I feel like it's only fair to make you the same offer. How does Primus of the Red Legion sound? And in the vest of the Emperor's agent, Callus says, The end will be so much more interesting if we face it together. At first, I was quite confused by this direction because it felt quite different from the lore surrounding the Shadows of Callus. Like, why do we care if Callus has forgiven Gaul? I think now I understand the significance of this. The Prestige Raid items also compares Guardians to Gaul and how Callus now equally admires Guardians. The Warlock set says this when comparing Gaul and Warlocks. I see the same wisdom in you, my dear Warlock. Perhaps when the time is right, we might discuss my ideas. The Titan set says this when comparing Gaul and Titans. There was no opponent too large or powerful for Gaul. His determination was everything. I see that strength in you, my dear Titan. The Hunter set says this when comparing Gaul and Hunters. It was only at the very end that I even began to suspect him. He possessed an absolute, single-minded dedication to his life of deceit. I see the same cunning in you, my dear Hunter. So I now think that the Prestige Raid armor is more about Callus recognizing Guardians rather than the focus point being Callus forgiving Gaul. We of course kill Gaul and therefore should even impress Callus more. The player now understands that Callus recruits the shadows of Callus from any species, i.e. the story of the normal raid gear, and Callus has started to take an interest in Guardians i.e. the story of the prestige raid gear. The introduction of the raid layer Eater of Worlds puts the cherry on top, specifically the raid shotgun zenith of your kind. The item reads, Earth has no shadow, not yet. Callus, Emperor of the Cabal, I have come to admire how you rally against the impossible. It's not your continual success that amuses me. Your light assures victory. It's your refusal to kneel. You fight and you die without a second thought. For what? Personal glory? Wealth? The wretched denizens of your refugee city? You have made bitter foes of races older, nobler, and more worthy than you. You struggle so vainly and valiantly when you have so little, when you are so little. Everything this universe has thrown against you, and still you persist. I could finish you and you would not be at my side at the dimming of the world. You, the guardian of guardians. If I wished it, you would die your final death. But I won't. Why? Because I am in love. Callus, Emperor of the Cabal. Callus states that Earth does not have a shadow. Of course, he's referring to a shadow of Callus. Just like Callus recruited a single surviving warrior from other species he destroyed. He then speaks about how he is in love. Callus also threatens that if he wished it, you would die your final death. And there may be some truth to that. As you complete the Eater of Worlds lair, Callus actually teleports you to safety into the rewards room. Depending on the ending that you receive, he might say, <laughs> Relax! I have you, Traveler's Born. You fought well, but let this be a lesson. I can offer you something greater than light. I can keep you safe. I'm beginning to think there might be more to you than the cosmic power you are you. Given time, I believe you and I will forge miracles together. <laughs> I promise you, we will meet again. You can see how the story progressed through the raid armor. By firstly introducing the concept of the Shadows of Callus, i.e. the normal Leviathan raid. Then Callus comparing Guardians to Gaul, i.e. the prestige raid gear. And finally, Callus falling in love with the power of Guardians, and saying how Earth doesn't have a shadow yet. 
i.e. the Ray de Lair, Eater of Worlds. Interestingly, the Shadows of Callus have always been a single being, not a group of people, like a raid team. And Callus implies that he is also interested in just one Guardian. He says, you, the Guardian of Guardians. Almost as if Callus wants to recruit the top Guardian to become a Shadow of Callus. This is somewhat reinforced in the name of the weapon, Zenith of Your Kind. Zenith means the time at which something is most powerful or successful. So in this context, Callus is talking about the most powerful guardian of the time. Without doubt, Callus wants to meet us and recruit us, or at least recruit one guardian, into the shadows of Callus. So, my predictions. We will actually meet the real Callus. Well, I hope so. The Lord definitely points in the direction that we will meet Callus. I predict that Bungie will continue to add raid lairs onto the Leviathan with the new expansions, at the very least with the Warmind expansion. Guardians will complete the raid lairs and continue to impress Callus. And I hope, I really hope, that before the Leviathan raid is retired, that Guardians will stand before Callus and Callus will offer us a place amongst the shadows. Of course, we will have to decline and defeat Callus, and that will be the finale that retires the Leviathan Raid. That concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, leave the word Zenith to symbolize the top guardian who will be offered a place as a shadow of Callus. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Mylan Games. Peace.